us up tonight, health care. We know that it costs a fortune in this country and that 34 million Americans are without health insurance. The presidential candidates say they intend to fix this problem. Well, NBC's Lisa Myers looks at how their plans affect people, in this case in Austin, Texas. Austin Welder and Generator Service once provided health insurance for its workers, but now can't afford to. From a, a moral and ethical standpoint, I feel like I'm letting them down. Kurt Summers, the boss, knows how tough it is. He only recently has been able to afford insurance for his family, and it covers only catastrophic expenses and provides no coverage for his son, Brandon, who has Down syndrome. If the kids get sick, I have to think, well, can we afford it this week, or do I just take care of him here and try not to take him to the doctor? Getting health insurance for all Americans is a goal of all three candidates. Perot has no plan, but promises one if elected. Bush and Clinton have vague plans with sharply different approaches. One is about more government involvement, more government intervention and control. One is about relying more upon the market system and more individual choice. My program is this, keep the government as far out of it as possible. Bush emphasizes individual choice. He'd give workers like Steve Moran and his family tax credits or vouchers to help them buy private insurance. With an income of $19,000, Moran's family would get a voucher worth about $2,800. I would uh, more than likely be able to get some sort of coverage. But there's a problem for middle-income families. Fred Summers, who makes $27,000 and has five children, would receive a tax break worth only about $560. Oh, that wouldn't get us started. That'd cover about one month's health care for me and my family. Critics say Fred Summers isn't alone. As many as 25 million Americans still would lack insurance under the Bush plan. Under our plan, health care will become a right, not a privilege. Clinton's plan would provide insurance for everyone by requiring employers to cover their workers. Most workers like that idea. Many small business owners don't. It would damage our company and many other companies uh, financially and may, may put us out of business. Clinton says small businesses like this will get tax credits to ease the burden. Still, workers like Moran worry that the burden will be too great. And then we'll all be without jobs then, then we, we don't have jobs, and then we don't have insurance. So, I don't like it. Bush and Clinton agree on the need to reduce spiraling health costs. Clinton's solution, you government say, intervention to control health care spending. Bush says that will reduce quality and bureaucratize the system. We don't want to strangle it by price controls and setting total spending by government fiat. Bush's prescription? More competition. Clinton says that won't work. If whether we do nothing or if we do the Bush plan, the costs are going to keep rising. Both candidates claim that they can save enough by reigning in health care costs to pay for insurance for tens of millions of Americans who need it. Experts say, in the short term at least, that's fantasy. We're talking about uh, 30 to 50 billion dollars of additional spending to get either of these plans off the ground and uh, that money's going to have to come from some place. These workers believe that one way or another, the money will come from them. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Washington. We'll have more news in a moment. Of well, some of today's other news, under investigation by the FBI, U.S. Treasurer Catalina Villapando on felony charges that while in office, she accepted substantial money from a former Welcome. employer. She's now been placed Welcome on indefinite leave. In Utah, rescue teams battled bad weather overnight, searching for survivors from an Air Force helicopter crash in the Great Salt Lake. Twelve bodies recovered. Only one person survived. Back to politics now. Zachary Taylor of the Whig Party was elected president in 1848, but ever since, a Democrat or a Republican has won the job. But others always try, and this year is no exception. As NBC's national correspondent Bob Kerr reports now, Bush, Clinton, and Perot have company. These are the names we all know in a California art exhibit. Yet more than a hundred Americans have been running for president this year. Winton Wurzwick, the rebel without a clue, Susan Block, the sex candidate, and ventriloquist Irvin Gunther, the little people's candidate whose running mate is a real dummy. But seriously, folks, also included are almost two dozen presidential candidates who will appear on various ballots around the country. 
One of them, Andre Maru, the Libertarian Party candidate, is on the ballot in every state, just like Ross Perot. The debate commission, controlled by Democrats and Republicans, kept us out of the debates for their own uh, partisan reasons, and the press ignored that uh, to a great extent. So he travels the country seeking local coverage of the Libertarians' call for drastic reduction in the size of government. And in ads, Maru insists that his ticket would do better if more voters knew about it. They are the fourth choice, but NBC refuses to cover their campaign. NBC won't count or report their vote totals on election night. Dr. Falani, we are not here for you. During the primaries, frustration boiled over. Candidate Lenora Falani of the New Alliance Party disrupted a Bill Clinton appearance in order to draw attention to being shut out of debates. She's on the far left, on the ballot in 40 states, and has raised $4 million, half of it in federal matching funds. She believes Perot's candidacy helps all independent efforts. I think that combined vote is what we need to be well on our way to building a broad-based coalitional effort that will take over politics in this country in the next 10 years. Alternative candidates had their own debate. John Hagelin on the ballot in 29 states thinks his natural law party has one answer. The most effective technique that has been used so far and studied scientifically for cutting stress is probably transcendental meditation. On election night, one frustration these candidates share is an inability to find out how many votes they got. If they ever get more than a fraction, the networks say they'd report it. Bob Kerr, NBC News, New York. Back in a moment with another screamer of a story. It can be a scary place in the best of times, so when it comes to Halloween... Hollywood is in a league of its own. NBC's George Lewis. He died! <laughs> hey, kids, how'd you like to be the first one on your block to be dipped in a vat of acid and mutated into a horrible ghoul? The Universal Studios Hollywood theme park actually did a casting call at high schools in Los Angeles, and there was no shortage of zombie wannabes. <laughs> We're looking for talent, male or female, who can project terror. The park needed all sorts of bodies, warm, cold, and otherwise, for its Halloween horror nights. A guy named Beetlejuice explained the concept. A lot of scary stuff, a lot of fun stuff. You know, magicians, maniacs, killers, psychos, me. <laughs> so you gotta check it out, definitely. Just like the streets of LA, right? Uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> The place has been stocked with all sorts of ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties and things that go bump in the night. Parking structures have been transformed into haunted houses and backlot sets have become chambers of horror. Studio publicists gleefully gloat that the production uses 4,000 gallons of fake blood, 2,000 gallons of special gooey slime, 1,000 trained rats plus spiders, bats, snakes, and all sorts of other cuddly creatures. And kids, if you didn't pass the audition, you can always buy a ticket and be terrorized on your own nickel. Or you can wait for next year's auditions. Try to visualize something horrifying. Think homework. Or you're grounded. Happy Halloween. And don't call us. We'll call you. George Lewis, NBC News, Hollywood. Think Nightly News. Gary Cutley will be here tomorrow night with continuing election coverage. I'll see you again on Monday.